Good evening, WellCare. We are, here, we are Health Tech Solutions. We're here to give you our proposal for a network. Okay. Let me introduce our team real quick. We have Tyler Jones. We have Jennifer Nicole. We have Luis Ortiz. We have Shalene Robinson. Hi. Julian Henderson. Delilah Hart. Shane Franklin. My name is Sean Nazer, and this is David Kenny. We're going to go ahead and get started off here with our project manager, Shane Franklin. Thank you. Hello, I'm Shane Franklin, and I'm going to go through the <coughs> project description for you. Uh, <clears throat> due to your proposal and looking at the specifications of the equipment that you uh, told us about, we uh, recommend that we rebuild and upgrade all the equipment and network and infrastructures in the office. Uh, we, <clears throat> we decide that we need to replace all the equipment due to age. Uh, we ensure we need to ensure connectivity into all the offices, um, update billing and insurance services from the old software that you have. We need to provide centralized, a centralized solution to your data storage and your backup um, so that uh, the person doesn't take his tapes back home and put it under his bed. Okay. It'll be available to you at any time. Um, we, <clears throat> uh, according to you, we've expected uh, a growth of four additional doctors and nurses and, a pro and a, um, an office manager. Um, and we also want to ensure that the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act uh, is in compliance. Find that button. Um, our timeline breakdown is that um, we'll be 41 days from beginning to end of the project. Uh, our paperwork and design will be three weeks. Upon the approval of that, we'll uh, commence our cable installations. Upon that, we will um, test all the cabling and equipment. Because the equipment will be installed and programmed and tested. And also setting up and training of the initial accounts will be, uh, that will be our last step. In, in the last week of the, of the program. Our growth expectations, again, are uh, the four additional doctors, the nurses that will come with them, one each, um, an office manager, uh, voice over IP phones, uh, our wireless capabilities so that the doctors can bring in their laptops or their um, uh, PDAs or their tablets for that matter. Um, we're going to merge all the offices so any doctor can work out of any office that they wish. And also we will be upgrading um, all the equipment. Okay, and Luis will be presenting our security portion of this program. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, stakeholders, <laughs> doctors, uh, the Part of the security I believe is the main focus given that the, that the patient information needs to stay confidential. We need to also uh, play part in the Privacy Act to make sure everybody's information is safeguarded from uh, any, you know, any possible uh, spillage or, or dissemination of people don't need to know. So how we're going to take care of that is basically the security posture of the network is going to be taken into an approach by three ways. The first is the systems configuration technology, what's out there right now to provide security as, as, as part of the physical network and the different layers that need to provide security. Okay. The second part is user training, so we'll have a, 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 a training plan and acceptable use of policy, provide some guidance to the users on how to operate in the network, how to manipulate the data and be able to actually uh, carry out day-to-day -day, uh, operations without having any difficulties. The third part will be the configuration and quality assurance. Uh, by providing a configuration control to the already approved and accredited security configurations and, and the different workstations, uh, networking equipment, servers, and the quality assurance will be the, the checking part. Make sure that's all in place, nothing's changed, and that we haven't leveled down the level of security. The other aspect, what we consider the success criteria for our uh, implementation of security as be completely and truly compliant with the Health Insurance Portability Accountability Act. 
ensure that we are in compliance so we can operate within the federal laws. The second part is what we call the best uh, security practices in accordance with our industry, what they consider to be uh, the best practices that will permit to carry operations without any uh, leaving any open threats or intrusions. How that's going to maintain basically is going to flow around the CIA, which is the, the posture of confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Uh, all the, it all it's geared towards maintaining that confidentiality, sure the user information is only viewable by those authorized personnel. The integrity is that nothing's being altered, no, nobody can go change your name or your date of birth or social security number in that aspect. And then the availability is that the nurse and those practitioners are able to access the information as they need to. Now, how we're going to make that a success, how we're going to enable the true security, we're going to have an in the network you have discretionary access control. So in this case, um, those users that have been trained, like we showed in the previous slide, that person will get a credentials provided by the security manager once they completed their training successfully, and that will allow them to gain access to those needed resources in order to carry out their day-to-day their -day operations. That will also have a structure of file system what's confidential, what's not confidential, what's public and not public. And that's where the patient and confidential records control. The Active Directory will have a list of authorizations to be groups created, permissions in place to only permit certain items to be viewable by certain staff members. Um, from the hardware aspect, information and traffic will go between the different sites and the main office. So we'll put in place a staple firewall content filtering. You have to be able to control what information comes through. If there's confidential data and it's being spilled over to, let's say, the web server for, for a portal, you want to be able to stop that, and that will cause a possible security uh, <coughs> event. The intrusion detention, actually, I take that back. So that's the controls and dissemination to the authorized parties. Intrusion detection is basically you have a active system that will control any any probing, any of the known threats trying to gain access to our system, keeping that, that barrier between the outside world and what's considered your local domain. The screen engine and tracking signatures is also placed part with intrusion detection. And how they do is they, they can do ping of death, they can do synac attacks, they can do open port, man in the middle, that type of stuff It's in place to be able to detect the different aspects of, of what will be sort of hacking. Active inventory uh, is going to, it plays part, it's probably a process that's going to be running on the firewall and, and other pieces of equipment, active directory and, and, and the logging system that's going to be put in place in order to track user activities, look for denies, accept uh, different events that will trigger a, 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 a what could possibly be a security incident. And the baselining of the system will also give us an idea of what day-to-day -day operations will be carried through. That gives, with that in hand, you could go and take a snapshot of your system at any given time, look back, and if there's an anomaly, then it should be, the delta should be your anomaly, be able to pinpoint the problem. Uh, with the security aspect, <coughs> that's basically all we cover. And now I'm going to hand you over to the light. Could you, could you pass me? My paperwork there. And the book. Mm -hmm. And the book for a second. My name is Delilah. I was in charge of the disaster recovery plan. Priorities of IT recovery should be consistent with the priorities for recovery of a business functions and processes developed during the business impact analysis. Information technology systems should require that it requires hardware, software, and data connectivity. Without these components, a system cannot run. These need to be available all the time. There must be a plan to ensure that these are up and running, or at least a plan to make it the shortest time possible for the system to be down. The recovery time for an IT resource and match the recovery <coughs> time objective of business function or process that depends on the IT resource. There's businesses that it depend on their system to be up and running. The minute Every second that this business is not up and running, this mess, business may be losing money. They may be losing customers. Therefore, they have to, they, there has to be a disaster recovery plan in place. Because the disaster recovery plan 
It stands for me as a plan B. If something happens, what am I going to do? If I lose my job, how I'm going to pay my bills, how I'm going to put food on my table, how I'm going to get myself in and out of the house to find another job. This is what disaster recovery plan does. It makes sure that if something happens, there is something quick and available, that if anything happens, you have at least a little tiny of a grasp somewhere that you could start building up your business again, getting back up and running with the, with the least losses possible. <coughs> Priorities of an IT recovery should be consistent. Nope, I think I did that. Okay. Dual data centers handling all data processing needs running in parallel with data mirror and or synchronized between two centers. Okay, this is a way of a backup. Um, when you have a disaster recovery plan, most likely everything relies on your backup. That is what a disaster recovery plan does. What this means is that in this particular this one fits the project that we are doing because we do have five offices that all of them have similar hardware, similar, similar programs, similar software. In this case, I think that um, we think that our, our, our doctors will benefit from a parlor because all their offices are similar. So if one office goes down, it will be a little bit quicker, safer, and easier just to back up from another office that's up and running. Hardware or alternate facilities can be configured to run similar hardware and software applications as needed. That's exactly what I was explaining. I was explaining. All, of our, all, of, all of our offices, but the difference of one is just a little bit different. The other four, they are the same. So a backup, full backup, up to date should be pretty quick and easy to get from one site to another. Data can be restored as an alternate site and processing can continue. Okay. This one, when it's talking about, this one is talking about more of a cloud. In our case, we got what is called eClinical Works, which is a software, and it's, it's, it's by a provider, and it's also called a hot site. It's by a provider. It, it's, it's a paid service. However, our systems could go down. All of them could go down at some point or another that our doctors and nurses will still have access to our um, patient's billing, contact information, emails, and um, and and health insurance. This protects that if anything happens, they can still address their clients, their patients, and not lose contact of these patients at no point in time. If an outage is detected at the client side by a vendor, it should automatically hold that data until client system is restored. In our case, we have um, we we created our plan. Within a 24-hour period, everything should be up and running. After after 24 hours, we're looking that our doctors may be losing more than they're gaining, and then that will become a bigger risk factor. Um, we do have a plan that um, when we plan these things, you have to create somewhat of a checklist. And this checklist, we need to check when this is when when a disaster recovery plan is built. We do a checklist, and there we include hardware, software, personnel. Um, what it needs to run it, what it needs to to communicate between their service and other act and, and other um, remote access um, places, so they could get their their business back on the back up and running as fast as possible. And this concludes my slide. I will now present the title with risk analysis. Risk analysis. What could go wrong? As you can see from Lewis's part, we have security that is second to none. This security protects against human threats, system intrusions, break-ins. It also protects against unauthorized system access. We also have our network set up to provide protection against floods, earthquakes, and hurricanes. My point is to show you the overview of this plan and how it can uh, hold the safety and security of the doctor's office's medical records and other data. Our measures of protection here include automated vulnerability, vulnerability scanning tools, also internal penetration testing from outs um, to determine our weak points in our, um, in our network. Also, quarterly, we do a periodic view of our security controls. <coughs> As we go here, here we go. Our long-term environmental plan, we are green. We make sure that long-term power fare, pollution, chemicals, and um, liquid um, leakage are not, going, are not going to the environment. We are um, complying with the Florida Bureau of Environmental Health. 
also with the hazardous waste regulation sections of Florida. Our um, preservation measure, our preservation measure, measures to keep your data backed up is also top notch as well. Data will be backed up offline and offline sites too, as well as to serve as a second backup. Every two months, that data is also saved on electronic tape. To give you a peace of mind of what we're doing here, our company is not just another company. Our <coughs> proposal here is to show you that we have no better service than for, de for delivering your data securely, efficiently, and swiftly. We hope that you look at this and our risk analysis to show, that, to show you that we cover all the factors and not just five. This way, we can develop, deliver the most consistent solution to running a healthcare system. Now, I want my part for the risk analysis is over, and I want to show you the office building dimensions. It's going to be held by David Kenyon. Thank you. Okay, uh, we've got five buildings here that we're going to be turning into a central office and four satellite offices on the north, south, east, and west. Each office is practically the same. Uh, each office is 92 feet wide and 66 feet deep. The height from the floor to ceiling is 10 feet. The height from the drop ceiling to the roof is an additional 4 feet. The hallways and passageways are 4 feet wide. And most other rooms are equal in size at 10 feet by 5 feet. The IT telecom room is 16 feet in length. Uh, we have three restrooms in the corners. We also have uh, eight uh, examination rooms. We have three doctor's offices, and we have a nurse's office, supervisor's office. We have a storage office over here. We have billing collection, financial manager, regular manager, and we have uh, laundry, and I think that's about it. Uh, to delve into the details, I'm going to pass it over to Sean, the main office requirements. Here you David. Thank you. Our main office right up here. Obviously, we're going to start at the top here. We have four servers. Obviously, in this lower corner, as mentioned earlier. We have two high-speed printers, copiers, and scanners. One right here by the main doctor's offices. And one over here by financial or billing collection. Fax machines also over by billing. They're spread out evenly, so they're easy to get to from any office in the building. We have 13 full workstations scheduled um, stationed around. We have up front, the nurse's station, as well as the individual offices. There are 16 telephones also located throughout the, throughout the building, as well as wireless routers for any kind of laptops, PDAs, or any wireless device that the doctors or nurses or even some, um, even some patients may bring in during time here at the building. For this main office here, we've used approximately about, or we're going to use approximately around 13,000 feet of Cat6 cable. Now for the remote offices, I'm not going to show you all four, because they're pretty much the same. One will be just fine. We saw we have two servers for the individual offices. Same number of copiers and scanners located in the exact same locations. We have 10 PC workstations located around the building here, as well as 10 telephones. Wireless routing capability is the same as the main office, as well as since the offices are a tad bit smaller as far as how much we're using, we only have about 4,500 feet of Cat6 cable per satellite office. Now we're going to go into the software. We're going to bring Mr. Ortiz back up here. Back into the software aspects of the pet network solution. Uh, there's two, we have separated into two sections. One covers the server deployment, which is going to provide your core services, and then your workstation, which will be your access points into those core services. Uh, for the <coughs> server part, we have Microsoft Server 2008 uh, Standard Edition. That was going to be able to support our AD, our domain host configuration protocol, our domain name services, Exchange and of course the event logging for the security aspects. Second part is the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. This is going to support our VoIP system, our SQL, and the Apache server, which is going to be used by both subsystems, which is in this case SQL and VoIP. The VMware is basically the underlying uh, software that's going to carry this upper uh, operating systems and make them live in a uh, coexisting multiple different platforms. Uh, the VMware is going to, we're going to have the ESXi, vSphere, and then uh, at a global view, uh, enterprise VMware software that will allow the operations to carry in multiple blades with this operating systems living in it. Uh, semantic antivirus is our uh, choice of antivirus protection 
intrusion detection endpoint firewall is going to be a managed solution. The server aspect will have a semantic endpoint protection type of server, and that's going to have a, a top of the tree down to the workstations type of environment where antivirus updates and different intrusion management signatures and stuff like that will get disseminated to the workstations. Workstations will have also a client, and this, this is why those, this one is in between the two areas. Workstations will have the client, and those will be fed the different updates from the system of the upper layer. Windows 7 is the uh, professional, it's the operating system of choice for the user workstation. Of course, it's going to have the best uh, industry practices as far as lockdown, uh, background uh, compliant notices, login banners, and different aspects of user uh, files will be separated according to the domain and AD rules and structures. We're also going to provide them with some uh, basic office tools, in this case, the office suite, which is going to allow them to write documents, presentations, and different Excel sheets. Internet Explorer 9, which later on you're going to be able to see for the portal, the um, uh, e-clinic, basically they can go in there and instead of pulling files, they have an electronic file, they can go look at it, and of course, Outlook, and that allows them to carry out the email communication between the different parts. Um, that basically covers the software aspect of it. I'm going to go ahead now and pass you over to Julian. Julian is going to cover the deliverables. And here's you, Julian. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, deliverables. Deliverable, a thing to be provided as a product or development process. Um, so, our goal was to recognize the customer needs, see how we can improve on it, and provide the best solution. Um, the goals that they provided for us was to rebuild and upgrade equipment and network infrastructures to all the offices, um, all equipment replaced due to the aid, ensure connectivity between the offices, update billing and insurance services, and things of that nature. Um, the, the details of what we did was we connected all five offices um, and had a successful way as far as networking and everything going together. Um, the outdated equipment was replaced with new equipment and they're in 2013 right now, going forward. Uh, upon completion, uh, like I said, we upgraded and approved and implemented all the equipment. Um, the system design was for, the system was designed for growth. So like I said, right now they're in 2013, but they're ready to go forward. Um, fully configured the domains filing system for patient records and for HIPAA, um, did a backup and restoration plan, which falls into the disaster recovery plan that Delilah was covering. And um, the budget was reasonable. We got everything under budget. Um, that's it for the liberals. Now I'll pass it over to Jenny Nicole. Okay, so I covered your network diagrams. Um, basically what we're showing here is your um, network structure. Here is your router, um, which connects straight to your switches. Your switches are going to be moving to your servers, which cover the DHCP, the DNS, AD, IIS, and FTP. Um, and you have your faxes and copiers over here, your VoIP, your wireless, and then all your workstations. And this is for all your remote offices, um, the satellite offices. The only difference here is that you only have two servers. And again, your router, which connects to your switches. And then everything's coming off your switch. So. I'm going to move it over to our to Shailene, who's covering the costs. Hi, how are you doing? Um, here, you guys want to see the equipment selection. It's being separated by hardware, physical layer, and also by servers, PCs, and also the labor costs and the summary. Here in the hardware, you will see that we have the Cisco routers, the Cisco switches, the UPSs that will help you maintain the backup, and also parts of the physical layer. This is a continuation of the hardware. The server will come out of the, um, a total amount of 115K. The workstation is 326, like you can see right here. And the network gear is going to be the wireless iPhone and the ISR, the integrated service wire. 
and the total amount of around 220000 This is the PCE. The PCE includes everything that you're going to need for your office. Um, right here you have the printers, you have the servers, and also you have the wireless, the, print, um, the Lexmark, that's the one that we're going to be using. Right here you have the servers, and you have the labor cost. And the labor cost, you have the network hardware, the backup, installation, firewall, the staff, server installation and configuration, and installation and configuration of the medical software. And right here you have a summary. The summary is the proposal that we have from you guys. It was our 1.5. And like you see, we managed to keep under the budget, so 1.4. And you have the hardware physical layer, that's the total amount. The PC, the total amount, the service, the total amount, and the labor cost, and the total amount. And right here, everything about the equipment is covered. Thank you very much for your kind attention. And if you have any questions for us, we'll be glad to answer your questions for you. All right. Now, <clears throat> first things first, you guys did an excellent job. We really appreciate you coming in and presenting to us. Um, what I would like to do now, um, if you guys are comfortable with this, um, what we'll do is we're going to talk a little bit about what the network is going to look like when it's coming in there. From a sideline, just real quick, um, obviously we're in character a little bit, so we're going to maintain the questions within the scope of what we're, what we're supposed to be doing here. Something the doctor would ask. Something the doctor would ask, that's right. <clears throat> I do want to tell you one thing, not to scare you, but this is his, like, 15th capstone. <laughs> okay? He just gets off on it. No, so... Um, I do a lot of these. Um, so what was, I'm a lot easier than... Um, Cabrit uh, uh, Calabrese. I've heard he's really He's very rough, so you're lucky you got me in